Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. This time, I have the pleasure of showing you an awesome replay, one of the best I've seen in a long time in the E75, by SRS Director. Now, the E75 was probably... It was my first Tier 9, actually, thinking back on it. And it's an absolute beast. A few patches ago... It was modified, its engine power was significantly reduced, but its top speed and its track reverse was greatly increased. What this means is the E-75 can quickly re-engage targets that are flanking it, especially on hard terrain such as this. Because remember, a tank will turn faster on hard terrain such as Himmelsdorf than it will on soft terrain such as the Desert Sand River. So SRS Director. But from now on, I'm just going to call Director. He's on Himmelsdorf, and he is in a fantastic matchup. Now, the E75 adores fantastic matchups. Its kind of lack of DPM doesn't matter so much because the health pool of the enemies are generally lower. And more importantly, its armor, which is got to be one of the best tier for tier in the game, is amplified in strength. Now, Director confirms the first kill of the game on a rather important T-71. And his buddy decides, oh, well, maybe it wasn't such a good idea to come here on Himmelsdorf. And gets taken out as well with his second shot. Now, you can feel a little bit sorry for those light tanks. Himmelsdorf is a tricky one to scout, especially if you're just learning the game. Now, Director has his equal number on the enemy team come towards him. And look how he turns his tracks out slightly there. He takes no damage, apart from light track damage. The enemy E75 takes 53. That's something that you can do if you're about to be rammed by an enemy tank. It's better if they hit your track, as it will take some of the damage for you. So director connect a great shot into the lower plate of the E75. And the enemy E-75 doesn't get him. Now, because the E-75 is so tall, he's using auto-aim here. And from the side, that's an easy penetration for the E-75. However, he releases auto-aim as he has a flush shot into the side of his opposing tank's turret. Now, the E-75 is an absolute behemoth until it gets flanked. And then again, even if it is flanked, by most tier 7 tanks with about 175 millimeters of penetration they're still going to find it very hard to go through its side armor but not the E75 I believe it has 246 that's right millimeters of penetration and 490 alpha damage but it's 128 oh that one went a little wayward failing to damage the IS but probably taking his tracks off in the process the director sees that it's time for him to attack. The enemy is starting to win the western flank, and there's a fierce battle going on for the hill. He spots a Black Prince. This is a tier 7 British heavy tank that has pretty much no chance to penetrate him. Looks like he gets confused about the outline of the Black Prince. Why can't he see the outline? And figures out, ah, there must be a car in the way. Shoots straight through it and penetrates the tier 7 British heavy tank. Now, when a tier 9 tank with 128mm does shoot a tier 7 heavy, it shaves off a third of its health with every shot. This Tiger sneaks in a, a shot into the side of Director there. And he doesn't want to be flanked right now. So what he does is he side scrapes to bounce the Tiger, although that exposes himself to a couple shots from the Black Prince. But as we can see, the Black Prince is still bouncing off him. Until then... But he obviously doesn't see the Black Prince as much of a threat. He's far more worried currently about the Tiger. Now he's managed to get himself into a position where he's got his frontal armor to both enemies, making it very hard for them to penetrate him. That allows him to engage the Tiger. But oh gosh, it's not all good news as a tier 8 German t artillery makes its way around the corner. Thankfully, Director manages to reload in time and take him out before that horrible beast of a derpy gun that was on the GW Tiger managed to put one into him. 
it would have definitely done, I'd say about 500 damage if it hit his thick parts of his armor, upwards to one-shotting him if it hit his weaker armor. Finally, Director manages to take down that pesky tiger with his third shot, and this Black Prince now must be quite worried. Seeing Director take out a tiger and a GW Tiger P, a tier 8 artillery, right in front of him, and he's had about two or three minutes to shoot at him, and he's barely been able to do, I'd say, about 400 damage to him. It's not looking good for you, mate. The Black Prince is one of those tanks that gets very low penetration. Director is now angling for the IS and the Lorraine while he kills the Black Prince. So the Lorraine has fired two at him. The IS is trying to flank him. And Director repairs his tracks very quickly to try and stop the IS, but oh gosh, it's too late. Okay, you're just going to have to take the shots in the backside from the IS. That's no problem. Let's focus on the Lorraine right now, which is completely the right option. So he's ignoring the IS and keeping his armor focused to the Lorraine. You do not want that 100mm autoloader shooting you. Perfect play here by Director. Preventing the Lorraine from getting the shots into his side. And even manages to angle to the front while his frontal armor to the IS to bounce his second 122mm. He is bullying that IS around, keeping shunting him while bouncing tanks from all angles. That Panther is a tier 7 medium tank with amazing penetration, 200mm of it with its 75mm. And so you have to worry. But oh gosh, here comes a Type 59, a tier 8 Chinese premium tank. Off with his head. Oh my word, one-shotting the remaining health on that Type 59, 828 damage done with that ammo rack, and that must be demoralizing for the enemy team. He puts in another shot into the IS and checks behind him because there is a 5120 on the enemy team. Now he makes a slight mistake here, he exposes the side of his tank to his panther, there was no need for him to try and go into that corner, but maybe he thought it was a way out. He finishes off the IS and makes his way towards the panther. He needs to kill his opponents one by one by one, which is what you have to do in these situations where you're outnumbered. He begins to side scrape, doesn't tunnel vision and spots the 5120, immediately turns his tank and his turret towards the enemy and removes him from the game. And now begins to turn his armor back towards his panther, but this panther is not a beginner. He knows exactly what to do. He has to get the flank of the E75 and puts him within 12 hit points of death. Director is also now ammo racked, which makes the reload on his gun absolutely horrendous. And the Panther, albeit is two tiers lower than him, is on full health. But not for very long as Director puts 486 worth of damage. But check out how long the reloader is. Well, how long the reload is while the E75 is ammo racked. But he has managed to take the situation down when he was gravely outnumbered to a one versus one. He's already got two kills. Puts a good shot into the Panther. The Panther rushes him. Oh! Absolute disaster. Well played to that Panther. Can't take anything away from him at the end. Knew exactly what he needed to do, and that was to get the flank of the E75. What an absolute heartbreak for Director here. He went above and beyond the call of duty and was literally one shot away from securing probably the game of his life. Even over 9,000 damage and 10 kills was not enough to secure this game. Director really entered his stride towards the mid and end parts of this game. The start looked a little hairy with auto-aiming against the enemy E75, but in the middle, he did some fantastic work against the Black Prince, the Tiger, and the Artillery, getting himself into a position where he was able to keep his frontal armor to both opponents. And then, what can I say about the last stand down this alleyway? This was absolutely heroic. Such a crazy intense moment when he blew the head off this Type 59. And let's not forget when he stopped the two French autoloaders from flanking him. This Lorraine would have ended him very, very, very quickly indeed if he didn't keep his frontal armor to him and his quick reactions to turn around and one shot this 5120 just gave him even an inkling of a chance to be able to win this one. Director, you were one 
versus six in this game and you very nearly pulled it off it is an absolute challenge to be able to do so in a tier nine game thank you so much for this replay i thoroughly enjoyed it probably the best e75 game i've ever seen and i think a lot of players can learn from you about how you focus down each target one by one by one prioritizing the right target to mitigate the amount of damage that you would take this was unsurprisingly a mastery badge for director he also got cool headed high caliber and the pools medal for taking out 10 of the enemy team 1861 base experience and 9220 damage done hitting every shot he fired blocking over six and a half thousand damage with his armor taking a potential of eight and a half thousand and netting himself 70,000 credits profit. Director, this was just an absolutely insane game. Thank you so much for this replay, and I'm definitely going to give it a thumbs up. I'm also going to write you a message at the bottom. So there we go. And if you guys enjoyed this replay as well, please consider giving the video a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And if you want to see another replay of an E75, this time played by me getting the most kills I've ever got in World of Tanks, then click up here and you can go through to a 12 kill round on Runeberg. And let me know in the comments down below what you think of the E75. Do you think it's one of the most powerful tanks tier for tier in the game? Or do you think it has to get in a really good matchup like this to really perform? And there's been a lot of debate around the ST1 versus the E75 recently. How do you think the two tanks compare? And if you're experienced in both of them, which is your favorite and why? Anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.